For Cubs fans, the arrival of the home opener means so much more than just the return of baseball. It means you've survived another Chicago winter. Spring is finally here. And summer is on the horizon with the promise of flowers blooming. And ivy, too. A sense of renewal is in the air and hope springs eternal among old friends who haven't seen each other since fall. Year after year, the home opener is the baseball holiday that brings the family back together. But as Cubs fans know by now, this year won't be like years past. Instead of a homecoming filled with joy and possibility, the start of the 2020 baseball season looks like this. A quiet Clark and Edison. A front office closed. A ballpark empty. A season in doubt. Instead of celebrating the return of baseball, Wrigley Field stands as a sign of the times. Another place we can't go. Is this, yeah. is this video any better? Like most people around the world, players, coaches, and staff are all at home, waiting for order to return, waiting to head back to work. In these unprecedented times, this is what the waiting game looks like for the Chicago Cubs. It's been six weeks since the Cubs last stepped on a baseball field. An uneventful spring training game ended with this routine fly ball. Davis makes the catch, Cubs win. As fans celebrated and the Cubs trotted off the field, there was no indication of a crisis looming. This is fun, let's do it again tomorrow. What do you say, guys? I can't wait to see you guys again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But innings earlier, players began suspecting this could be their last game for the foreseeable future. I go out to right field and some kid is yelling my name, which happens all the time, right? But he's yelling it differently. Like he's trying to get my attention to tell me something. And he says, uh, Rudy Gobert just got coronavirus. The NBA season's been canceled. And so I'm like, all right, well, that's probably not good for us, huh? I go in and we start talking about it in the dugout. So the NBA canceled their seasons that day, I believe. And as soon as they were done, um, the writing was on the wall for us. One day later, when the Cubs arrived at camp to play the Dodgers, storm clouds were gathering. And they postponed the game. They said it was, you know, due to weather. That's just the report that was out. But it didn't rain that day. So we were like, right, what is really going on? John Lester was supposed to go to a sim game. We're as we're doing it, news is breaking. Rossi had just gotten off a call from uh, Major League Baseball. He's like, spring training's over. Hey, we are canceled. You have this much time to figure out where you're going, da 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 And, you know, start swirling and, yeah. Major League Baseball announcing opening day will be delayed at least two weeks. Spring training has been suspended due to the coronavirus crisis. I mean, we plan, sorry, <laughs> we plan this for a long time and it really means a lot to them. So. The threat to public health was much bigger than baseball. So the season was suspended indefinitely in everyone's best interest. Obviously, we know the science behind this is the infection is spreading and we're practicing appropriate social distancing. And I'm more worried about going and saying hello to my parents. You know, they're 62, 63 years old. Um, people's kids, you know, I got teammates with kids, relatives. So I'm just more worried about that, the safety of everyone else that may not be able to fight it off. This definitely wasn't on anybody's radar, uh, especially mine, but you, you learn how to adapt to the circumstances and communicate um, and continue to plan as much as you possibly can. 
The Cubs were entering uncharted territory, and the big question for the organization was, what happens now? How are you doing, Grant? Uh, we're doing okay. Just, uh, just busy, you know. Yeah. Talking with Theo, uh, it became pretty obvious that we were gonna we were gonna have a situation where the safest thing we could do for our players and our people were to get them home, and that's when we created our task force. Good morning. Um, I hope everyone is uh, doing as well as possible under these truly extraordinary circumstances. Like many organizations, the Cubs quickly reinvented the way they work, bringing their entire staff together for virtual updates about how the team is weathering this crisis. Um, hello, everybody. I, I want to start just by wishing everybody uh, great health and safety for, for all of you and for your families. It's, it's great to see everyone today, even, even virtually. Our first job becomes forget the business. You know, make sure people uh, know what they need to do to protect themselves. All our players are obviously back home. Uh, our medical staff um, and coaches are in touch with these guys uh, every every couple of days. Everyone's in good health. Then you come back to okay, what does an operation that relies on mass gatherings look like when you can't have mass gatherings? We're anxious to get back to work, and unfortunately, uh, we don't have additional information to share on that uh, today. The immediate focus will be putting. Uh, resources in the hands of the folks who are most vulnerable and need it the most. We are obviously a baseball team. Uh, we are a sports network. Uh, we are a hotel and hospitality business. Uh, we are a restaurant business. And then we're a public events business. And every one of them is has been decimated by this. As it relates to our business, I want to stress that we're facing a short-term issue. I think the most important thing that we can do is arm ourselves with information. The virus will tell us when the season starts. It won't be the commissioner and it won't be the Players Association and it certainly won't be me. The virus is going to tell us when we can play. For now, the Cubs wait to pick up where they left off in the spring training. Rossi and his staff ran a terrific spring and from all the communication with the players, that attitude remains in place. If anything, uh, what everyone is dealing with, what's going on in the world, and uh, the inability to come to Chicago, connect with our fans, and, and compete on behalf of the organization and, and, and for the city has, has made guys hungrier. The guys I've talked to, they can't wait to get back to Wrigley. Um, they can't wait to, um, you know, be around what I consider is a family, and I promise you we'll be hungry uh, when that season starts and we're going to hit the ground running for a great review guys in the championship back to Chicago. So, uh, Even with his connection feeling, Ross was understood loud and clear. A championship is still on the Cubs' minds for 2020, if they get the chance to play. Coming up, how four Cubs went from teammates to roommates in quarantine on Cubs 162. Ball players often refer to the start of spring camp as entering the baseball bubble. So when spring training was abruptly canceled on March 12th, many Cubs were taken off guard by the news. We were a little bit insulated. I think you're always insulated from, from world events during the baseball season. Once some of those things started to come to light um, and we had conversations as players, it, uh, it really had quickly. By March 16th, the Cubs training facility at Mesa was closed to ensure staff and player safety. And players quickly came to terms with their new reality. That was kind of when it got really, really serious for us. It was like, well, if we can't even come to work, uh, we're going to figure something out. The first priority for many was scrambling to find new living arrangements if you lived in an apartment, say in the off season, and then all of a sudden you're getting sent home, like you probably didn't still have that apartment leased for right now. So it's kind of like, hey, like you're going home, but you're like, where am I going home to? Like, I don't have a house right now. Like, what do I do? We are just like, uh, now what? Um, so pretty sure Dakota asked him, like, hey, like, what are you doing? A family friend of mine very generously has offered me their uh, pool house and I knew that they were gonna need a place to stay. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna stay. And Dakota was just like, okay, so me and Zach are gonna move in. Good morning, Dakota. Hello, yeah. 
How are you doing this morning? I'm still really tired, actually. How do you feel about your breakfast? Best meal of the day, by far. And then Nico got word of it. I kind of hopped on last second. I'm really glad I did. Minor leaguer Zach Short and Dakota Meccas and rookie Nico Horner moved in. And Ian Happ went from living in the pool house by himself to having a house full of cubs. I haven't had roommates since college. I never wanted roommates after college. Uh uh. Brick wall, this is me. But it's been good to have company through this time. As on the baseball field, being roommates takes teamwork, and each member of the house is adjusting to his role. Uh, I will say, first and foremost, Dakota is a great, uh, he's a great roommate. He's very good at cleaning. I clean up after dinner and kind of take the trash out and do all those things that really nobody else wants to do. Uh, the cooking has been uh, mostly Nico and Zach. Nico's pretty good with the sides. You know, he'll have the sweet potatoes, the Brussels sprouts, the asparagus, um, the pasta, and I'll try to put a different type of seasoning on chicken to make it taste different. That's about it. Yeah, we've had a lot of chicken. <laughs> As for Hap, he's serving a more executive function. I am the head chef. So when you run the kitchen, you just make sure everything comes out on time, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's my responsibility. Um, and of course, if they don't know how to make a dish, I'll step in, I'm the expert. He made one thing one time in a rice and it tasted like I was eating a piece of paper. The roommates have dubbed their new living arrangement the compound. And other than the cooking, life at the compound is good. So here we go, I'm gonna take you on a little tour. Uh, show you around the compound a little bit. It's awesome, honestly. Like, it's, if you're gonna be quarantined, it's not a bad place to be quarantined at. You know, we have a tennis court, we have a basketball court, uh, a golf course close, and, and we've turned our, our gym garage into a weight room. A couple of trap bars, nice equipment. This is where the magic happens. We've got a tennis ball feeder that we use for ground balls as well. So you can actually get did a pretty good workout moving around with and you know my mom was even like zach if you come home you better have gotten kicked out because that place you're you're gonna be sadly mistaken if you come home and you think you're gonna have that but the players haven't been immune to the boredom of quarantine so to pass the time app started a new house project a podcast they were like oh yeah podcast it's like no seriously we're doing we're doing a podcast i mean i don't really know anybody to get on the show zach doesn't really know anybody to get on the show like, I don't have many cool stories to tell. You know, I was like, like, what could we possibly talk about? Now they're like, oh, let's do a podcast today. This is going to be great. Look at the people. We're on Apple Podcasts. Like, yeah, you're welcome. You're all welcome. Welcome to the first episode of the Compound Podcast. Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode two. Welcome back to the third episode of the Compound Podcast, coming to you live from the Compound. It's, it's awesome. It's just for me really cool to talk to new baseball people, or if I really like routines and kind of providing purpose for my days that way. So we've made it enjoyable for all of us. And beyond keeping themselves entertained, the podcast is helping the players stay in touch with fans during the season's suspension. You know, the first thing that comes to mind with, with mental health this time, with loneliness, with being stuck, um, is finding things to entertain yourself, to, to bring some joy. And that was one of the goals of the podcast. Baseball's job moving forward is, is to connect better with the fans, with the fan base, with the people that support us every day. A baseball team is often called an extended family. The Cubs in the compound have found comfort going through this time with teammates by their side. It's just important to have, to have people you care about that they care about you and can support you through you know, anything like this. Coming up, baseball shutdown won't end Ian Miller and Steven Sousa Jr.'s dream of playing for the Cubs. Every player enters spring camp to prepare for the season ahead. But players on the cusp of making the roster must also perform. Non-rostered invitee Ian Miller arrived in Mesa this spring as a long shot with something to prove. I've been in the minor leagues for like seven years now. Coming into spring training, knowing, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not on the roster. 
I'm just a, a you know a spring training invite. You know, this was a pretty pivotal spring training, a pretty pivotal point in my career. Miller is a premier base stealing threat. And Miller takes off. Something the Cubs have been lacking in recent seasons. Rossi kind of just told me like, hey, you got the green light. Whenever you think you can run, just run. Just do, just do your thing. Miller takes off, pitches outside, and Ian is safe. After stealing a league high eight bases, Miller was firmly in contention to make the opening day roster. You know, I wanted to I wanted to come in here and, and rock people's world, man. I wanted to make the team. Another new cub turning heads in Mesa was Steven Sousa Jr. Already an established major leaguer, Sousa suffered a devastating knee injury one year ago during spring training with the Diamondbacks. He was released in the offseason, signed with the Cubs just before camp began. I, I just wanted to come in and be healthy first. I had to prove to myself that I was healthy. When you're gone from so long, you get reminded and, and you cherish those little things. And so when I saw my name in the lineup, I got, you know, butterflies again. By early March, Sousa's swing was back and he'd proven his knee was fully healed. And I just wanted to play. I just wanted to play and have fun. And I did, I had such a blast in spring training that um, I'm missing it right now. It takes skill, luck, and hard work to make a major league roster. And once there, the average career only lasts roughly three years. So losing playing time in 2020 has a real impact on players like Miller and Sousa. I really struggled that first week um, because of the buildup that I had up until that moment of like, I'm ready to go. I'm healthy. I'm ready to go. And I don't know what it would be like to miss two full years, not play baseball at all. I was a minor leaguer for seven years. I've never made any money. Once the season's supposed to start, you know, you're supposed to be making money. You, you know, you signed a contract to come over here. But I'm not, you know, I'm not on the major league roster, so there's no, no one has to pay me anything. The challenge now is to keep themselves ready while away from the game. My fiance and I are actually doing home workouts here. I borrowed some stuff from the, the, uh, the gym, the complex in, in Mesa. Obviously, you know, it's a tight space, you know, one bedroom apartment, but you know, you got to make do with what you got. You know, my faith is huge for me. So um, I don't really panic because to me, um, like I know who's in control. It's been actually uh, pretty uh, therapeutic, I would say. It's such a slow pace of life that we're just not used to. Both players have already made a compelling case to make the roster. And that gives them hope they'll still suit up for the Cubs in 2020. It gives me confidence that no matter how long it takes, I'll be ready to go when the bell rings, whether that's a month, two months, a year, whatever it is. There's uncertainty in almost everything right now. So, um, you know, no one really has the answers. I sure don't have the answers. I'm just trying to stay positive and, and really just focus on being ready for, you know, 2020 season, whenever it may be. Coming up, Cubs 162 imagines a season shorter than 162 games. While baseball's return remains uncertain, the Cubs' front office is already game planning what a shortened 2020 season could look like. Other research projects underway, one interesting one is trying to anticipate um, what the game will be like after such a delay is, is unprecedented, obviously, in Major League history, but maybe the closest analog is um, the strike-shortened season, especially 1995. Suffice it to say, there were a lot of injuries. To prevent injuries later, strength and conditioning coach Shane Wallen has players staying fit no matter their resources. Like some guys do have basically a home gym where they've got like every piece of equipment that you could imagine. But there are other guys who literally only have like one set of adjustable dumbbells that we were able to get them. You just have to get kind of creative uh, with, with what you're having the guys do. Shane has created a customized training program for all 40 major leaguers. He's even sent players demo videos that show how common household items, such as a jug of laundry detergent, can be utilized while sheltering at home. I'm really impressed with our guys and even coming down to guys who hardly have anything. You know what I mean? Like athletes just, they, they don't stop training just because of the circumstances. They're gonna find a way to train. For pitchers, after two months spent stretching out their arms, they must now deload to avoid overuse. 
there's no way to continue on the path that we were on in terms of making the same amount of throws and quantity of throws and building up pitchers. Um, so what you want to do with the deload is slowly taper that that workload off. Um, one of the worst things you can do in that situation is completely shut it down. While Hadovy can't monitor progress in person, the Cubs research and development team has designed its own app so he can serve as a virtual pitching coach. Everything's at our, at our fingertips right now, so it's easy to reconnect with guys and make sure that they know they have us um, accessible kind of whenever they need. Given the circumstances, staying active may be as important mentally as it is physically. We talk to the guys about it a lot because everybody's like, okay, should I be throwing? I need to be working out. I What's my routine? And it is. It's, it's important to stay active, but it's also important to use this time for what it is. It's not just the season that shut down. It's the world as we know it. The events of the past month are a clear reminder that baseball is just a game. But even so, Cubs players hope America's pastime can help heal the country when the time comes. My sister-in-law is a nurse at Mayo Clinic on the COVID-19 floor. Um, and so she's going to work every day, putting her you know, own body on the line. And uh, she's the real hero right now, honestly. And, and nurses around the country and doctors, and I'm super grateful for every one of them and thankful. We get focused on a lot of things that are going to feel very unimportant when we return. So I, hopefully it, it, it provides some, um, some nice perspective to the game and just enjoying being on a team and sharing a space with a group and providing happiness for other people. So uh, I hope that's a priority and maybe something we can learn from moving forward. I've seen the video and heard the stories of Sammy Sosa after 9-11 um, and that, that's what I'm, I'm most looking forward to to getting back to normalcy at Wrigley Field, um, that first anthem, how excited people will be. And I think it's gonna be really good for us and, and for the game. For now, we continue to tally the days spent at home. Wrigley Field still waits for baseball and for you. The Cubs will be back. It's not a question of if, but when.